I will start the eighth week of this course. In this week and the following week, we will discuss about X-ray diffraction and uh, the concepts related to X-ray diffraction, in particular that of the Miller indices. So, I will start with a discussion of Miller indices. Okay. So, uh, in this first lecture of week 8, we will be talking about Miller planes and Miller indices. First, I will talk about the mathematical description of a plane and a normal vector. So, uh, let us consider a general Cartesian coordinate system. Okay. So, so, so you have x, y and z axis, y and z axis. Okay. These are perpendicular to each other and in this case, uh, if, we, if we had a plane, okay, then, uh, then the plane will intersect each of the axis at some point. So, let us say, let us say it intersects the x axis at point, at point A, the y axis at point, let me show it a B, the z axis at point C. Okay. And now, so, so this plane intersects each of these axes and uh, this plane is a two dimensional object that looks something like this. Write this C again. C is the intercept on the y axis and A is the intercept on the x axis. Okay. So, so now, now the plane formed by joining these three points, okay this plane will of course, it will it'll, it'll extend in all directions. Okay. So, it is not it is not only limited to this this uh, triangular edge region, but it extends in all directions. Okay. So, so this plane the equation of this plane is given by x divided by a plus y divided by b plus z divided by c equal to 1. So, this is the equation of the plane and uh, many of you might be familiar with this equation of a plane. So, uh, you can write the plane equation in many different ways, but, uh, but essentially it is convenient to write it in this form where you have x over something plus y over something plus z over something equal to 1. Okay. Uh, now, sometimes, sometimes uh, b or c might be uh, sometimes uh, one or more of a, b, c may be equal to infinity. So, for example, for example, if a equal to infinity, if a equal to infinity, that means the plane never intersects the x axis. Okay, that means this plane never intersects the x axis. Okay. So, it means never intersects x axis. Okay. And in this case, the equation will just look like y over b plus z over c equal to 1. So, the equation will simplify, there will be no x term. Okay. Now, uh, similarly, you could have, you could have uh, 2 of if a equal to b equal to infinity, okay, then the equation is z over c 
equal to 1 or z equal to c okay, or z equal to c and uh, you can see this So, this plane I will just show it in a different color. So, it will look it will look like this. So, it intersects the z axis at c and it is essentially parallel to the to the x y plane. So, it intersects the z axis at, at uh, z equal to c, but it is, but it is uh, parallel to the x y plane. Okay. So, it never intersects the x or y axis. Okay. So, so uh, this basic description of a plane, okay, so let me write, so this is the z equal to c plane. Okay. So, you notice that I am describing the plane here using z equal to c instead of uh, instead of saying z by c equal to 1, but uh, that is the same. So, essentially what I want to say is that this uh, way of uh, describing planes is fairly useful. Okay. Now, uh, let us talk about a vector that is normal to the plane. So, for any plane you can draw a vector that is normal to it. So, so this So, I want to I want to consider a vector you can you can draw it at uh, at any point in the plane okay you can draw a vector that is normal to this plane normal vector and usually we take it to be a unit vector. So, so you can make a unit normal okay and wherever you draw it whichever point you draw on the plane it will be the same vector okay. So, there is a unique normal vector to every plane. I will just write it in red. There is a unique normal vector, okay. And this unique normal vector is n, and it can be shown that uh, again, again from basic uh, geometry, okay, you get the idea that the components of the normal vector. So, so, so we can write n hat is proportional to, I am writing proportional to okay, uh, a vector that is given by i by a plus j by b plus k by c. So, that is the normal vector. Okay, so, uh, you can go back and ask you know suppose, uh, sub, suppose we consider the case where a and b are both equal to infinity. If a and b are both equal to infinity okay, and z by c equal to 1, then the normal vector then the, in this first expression a goes to infinity. Uh, so, this goes to 0, b, go, b goes to infinity. So, j by b goes to 0. So, you are left with just k by c. Okay. So, the normal vector is proportional that means it is parallel to k by c. So, that is in the direction of z and you can see that that makes sense. Okay. So, you can see that for this the normal vector is in this direction okay. and uh, actually, actually the unit normal vector is just k hat in this case. Okay. So, the what you have to I, I have said that it is proportional to this if you want to find what it is equal to what is the constant of proportionality okay then you can do that you can do that quite easily you can just uh, divide this by the the normalization constant okay so so it is by the length of this vector so you take this vector divide it by its length and you'll get the constant of proportionality so what is the length of this vector the length of this vector is uh, is uh, the square root of uh, 1 over a square plus 1 over b square plus 1 over c square. 
okay. So, uh, so n hat I will just write the answer. So, this is equal to i by a plus j by b plus k by c divided by divided by square root of the length of the vector that is 1 over a square plus 1 over b square plus 1 over c square. So, this is the length of this vector. Okay. So, if I if I take a vector and divide it by its length, I will get a unit normal unit vector along that direction. So, this is the unit normal vector. Okay. So, this has unit length. So, this resulting vector will have unit length and I would not bother uh, you know expanding on this expression, but, but here you get the idea of a plane and a normal vector. Okay. Now, what we realize is that uh, this intercepts, intercepts on the axis are very useful to describe planes okay. and uh, so we will be expanding on this, uh, on this use of intercepts in the uh, we will be using this to to the concepts of lattice planes in crystals. So, if you take a crystal ok, now in this crystal the first thing is ok, ok let me just again again I will use two dimensions for illustrations ok and so a plane will look uh, like a line in this case. So, let me just take a simple square lattice now let me let me fix my origin say say i'll fix my coordinate system with my origin here And now, and now if I think of planes, if I think of a lattice plane, let me, I will just take an example of a lattice plane, uh, let me put a few more points. Okay. Now, you see this plane, okay. so this is passing through these, this is passing through this atom and this atom. Okay. Now, uh, I and 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 essentially if you if you look with this respect to these coordinates it forms it makes these intercepts it makes this and this are the intercepts intercepts on the two axes okay now uh, the crystal has a translational symmetry so i could take i could take uh, i could imagine that i do the same thing now with at a different origin let us say I do it at this, uh, let us say I do it using using this point as the origin and let me take a different color, I will use let us say using this point as the, as the origin. Okay. And now if I do, if I take exactly the same intercepts that I took here, so I take this and this. Okay then my resulting lattice plane I uh, will get a plane that looks like this and as you can guess it is parallel to this other plane, it is parallel to the plane in green. So, the plane in plane in purple is parallel to the plane in green and you can do this and you can get a series of parallel planes, okay. you can get a series of parallel planes okay. and uh, I will just I will just show some other parallel planes. So, for example, you will get something that looks like this, something that looks like this and so on. Okay. And in some sense these planes are all the same plane, okay. these planes are all the same plane, okay. just uh, they are just parallel to each other, but uh, essentially they are the same because you just changed your origin from one place to another, but uh, 
uh, but uh, essentially they are, there is something uh, because of the translational symmetry of the crystal these planes are in fact identical okay and uh, so so this is the so we have this concept of parallel lattice planes okay and uh, sometimes this is uh, referred to as a family of of parallel planes or just a set of parallel planes And uh, so, so now we would like to have a notation to describe this family of lattice planes. Okay, and uh, clearly we we will so so look for a general so so and this notation will be called known as the Miller indices. Okay, so this is used to describe this family of parallel planes and crystals. Okay. And uh, we'll just illustrate the use. We'll just illustrate how the Miller indices are calculated. Okay, and uh, it'll become very clear. So, so, so let's look at Miller indices for lattice planes. So, so here, what is done is uh, you you choose your crystallographic axis. So, let's uh, so so first we'll assume. assume that uh, lattice translation vectors a b c are perpendicular to each other i mean a actually actually it doesn't even matter we don't need to assume that but uh, let's just start with that okay so so now uh, you'll have your you'll have your crystallographic axis so so let's say you have you have a you have b and you have c and these are all perpendicular to each other now what you do is uh, you have these parallel lattice planes okay and you look lattice plane closest to origin okay so look for that lattice plane in that family of planes that is closest to the origin Okay. and uh, let's say it uh, now let me let me just draw that plane let's say this was my plane let's say this uh, this green thing is the plane that i'm considering okay and now you you look at intercepts so you look at the intercepts on the a b and c axis okay and uh, what you see is that the intercept on the a axis is at uh, is at uh, let me say this intercept is at is at 3 b axis is at 2 b so it is 2 in fractional coordinates and this is at c so it is 1 so let me say that the inter just i'm just taking an example where you have a plane where the intercepts are 
that is 3 a on the a axis 2 or 2 b on the on the on the b axis and 1 c on the c axis. Okay. Then take reciprocals and multiply by by least common multiple by least common Okay, so 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 what you'll do is you'll take the uh, reciprocal. So you have one by three, one by two, and one. Okay, and now I'll multiply by the least common multiple. Least common multiple clearly is six. So so uh, you get two, three. And this is the Miller index. So, the Miller index for this plane is 2, 3, 6, and you put it in a square bracket. There is no comma or anything, okay. it is just written as 2, 3, 6, okay. and you use, uh, you use a square bracket. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this is how the Miller planes are. Uh, you can you can calculate the Miller index for a plane. Now, uh, some points to keep in mind. Okay, special uh, so cases. If intercept is negative, intercept can be positive or negative. So it could it could intersect the axis on the negative side also. If the intercept is negative, use bar, bar, bar for example, 2 bar etcetera. Okay, so, that is that is one important thing okay. and uh, intersect can be infinity okay uh, intercept cannot be 0 okay so if it is 0 then it will also intersect at 1 so if it is 0 uh, then there will be a parallel plane that inter intercepts at 1 intersects at 1 okay so that that should be the one that is considered okay uh, closest to the origin so the plane should not pass through the origin okay but not passing through it Okay, so the so the so we look for the lattice plane that is closest to the origin but not passing through it. Okay, so so then no intercept can be zero because the lattice plane will not pass through the origin. If you get a lattice plane that is uh, intersecting one of the axes at zero, that means it will pass through the origin, and uh, that then you take the next lattice plane that is parallel to it but not passing through the origin. Okay, so so these are the Miller indices for the lattice planes. And uh, now, now uh, we can also use Miller indices for directions. Okay, and uh, this this is another very uh, very common thing that is used. So 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 here, this is used for a, for a lattice plane. Okay, you can also use the same for uh, also used for surfaces. So, you can say you can you can say the 2 3 6 surface you can call this the 2 3 6 surface of this crystal. Okay. Uh, now, you 
now we saw the concept of a normal vector okay now now miller indices are also used for directions okay but here the notation is so uh, you can you can say for example you can talk about the crystallographic directions you can talk about the a b c directions okay so uh, in this case the the no the notation is different so so uh, h k l so so h k l is the usual symbol used to describe the the miller indices and uh, if you put it with a square brackets as opposed to round brackets so this is represents a direction okay whereas let me remind you again the h k l with the curly brackets represents to a plane or a surface now now uh, actually the way you construct so 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 suppose i say suppose i say a direction of 2 3 6 6 okay what would that direction be so so a direction of 2 3 6 okay so this corresponds to 2a plus 3b plus 6c square root of 2 square plus 3 square well well uh, we have taken ab and c perpendicular to each other okay so so two so and uh, okay divided by the length of this vector let me i'll just say i'll just say divided by length of the vector okay so so the point is that uh, 2 3 6 the direction of 2 3 6 is along this 2 a plus 3 b plus 6 c okay there is no reciprocals no no reciprocals okay so when you are describing miller indices for directions there are no reciprocals that are involved okay so uh, so so keep in mind that uh, usually the round brackets is used for uh, is used for planes miller indices for planes or surfaces whereas the square brackets is used for directions okay now uh, there is one more uh, now you can extend this for uh, what i've been talking so far is uh, you can use it for uh, you can use it for uh, cubic or non cubic system okay you can use it for any any of the seven crystal systems okay and that's uh, not a problem at all okay now let's consider the case of cubic okay let's consider a cubic system okay and uh, and here now uh, if you consider the if you consider the 1 0 0, 0 surface and 0 1 0, 0 surface okay now let me let me draw these surfaces so Okay, so I've just shown I've just shown some of the points. I've not shown all the points, but uh, uh, let's say these are the so my so my A, B, and C are basically this is A or A, B, and C. Okay, now the one zero zero surface 
okay. So, this intersects intersects the a axis at 1 okay intersects the it does not intersect the b or c axis okay. So, so, so if this is my a b and c c directions these are the crystallographic directions a b and c. So, 1 0 0 will actually be parallel to the b and c axis and it will intersect the a axis at 1. So, it will look it will look something like this. So, it is parallel to the screen So, it is parallel to the screen and it passes through through this point ok, it intersects the a axis at 1. So, this is the 1 0 0. What about the 0 1 0? 0 1 0 will I will now now uh, this will be this will intersect the b axis at 1, but it will not intersect the a or c axis. So, the 0 1 0 will actually be So, so, so it will intersect the it will intersect the b axis, but uh, at uh, at 1, but it will it will uh, not intersect the a or the c c axis ok. So, so this is a 0 1 0 ok. Now, uh, because of the symmetry of the cubic system, because of the threefold symmetry of the cubic system ok, these two surfaces are equivalent are actually equivalent due to symmetry. So, 0 1 0 and 1 0 0 and let me add 0 0 1 are equivalent due to cubic symmetry. So, these surfaces are equivalent due to cubic symmetry ok. And uh, so, the notation used is, uh, so if I use the notation 1 0 0 ok, this corresponds to 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. So, it, it corresponds to the set of all these, all these three surfaces which are equivalent due to the cubic symmetry. So, so in general the notation the notation uh, H K L ok refers to set of equivalent lattice planes. And this is equivalent, this equivalence is due to the symmetry of the crystal ok. So, this equivalence is due to symmetry ok. So, most simple example is the case of uh, cubic where, where 1 0 0 0 1 0 and uh, 0 0 1 are equivalent ok. Alternatively I mean you could also have in cubic ok, you can also have uh, let us say 1 1 0 is the same as 0 1 1 or it is the same as 1 0 1 ok. Uh, again due to the cubic symmetry ok, these three are the same ok. There are many such examples uh, you can take for a cubic system ok. So, uh, this represents a lattice uh, uh, a set of equivalent uh, lattice planes sometimes this is called a family of 
family of equivalent crystal plates. Okay. And uh, correspondingly, there is a notation for directions that is H K L with an square brackets. So, this is the family of, of equivalent directions. Okay. So, these are two additional notations, we would not be using these too much, but it is, uh, but you might encounter these uh, when you are reading literature okay, or you are reading various books. So, that is why I wanted to mention these. Okay. So, uh, so, with this I will conclude the first lecture of week 8, okay. thank you.